everyone. Welcome to the Royal News Network Saturday morning live stream. I hope you guys are all having a great Saturday. Miss Pippa would like to say hello to everyone. She is busy just getting up to all sorts of fun business, but we have lots going on in the royal world. Obviously, we have Harry being getting a bit in trouble or not really in trouble, I should say. But Harry's visa is going to be reviewed by the judge and the judge will decide whether or not the public will get to see it. We also have Megan giving her a little spiel at the South by Southwest event yesterday. Harry, of course, lovingly in the front of the crowd because, you know, the feminist Megan must have her husband there to justify her feminism. And then we also have, obviously, Prince William with a huge, huge coup when it comes to the Earthshot Prize that he has got a company that is going to make these biodegradable um, storage containers for food. And they're going to be in stadiums all over the United Kingdom. We obviously still have all the stuff with Catherine. And then we also have just, again, the sadness going on with Megan complaining yet again about all the cyberbullying she experienced. And yet at the same time, not acknowledging what her sister-in-law has gone through or the fact that so many have gone through the same thing or that, you know, it's something that happened years and years ago. Like it was always about Megan guys. It's never about anyone else, but Megan, it's the only reason she's doing anything. So guys, again, welcome to this live stream. We have a new setup a bit today. We have my filming camera working as the camera because I will actually, I have the whole South by Southwest thing recorded and I will be doing a whole video about it later. And so I hope my screen just went black, but hope, but it's still showing up on here. So as long as you guys can hear me, this is all good. All right, Ms. Pippa. Well, thank you. You're going to be a little bit distracting. So say goodbye to everybody. Say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Okay. My little co-host is going to go find her bed in somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Can I find a blankie? Okay. Because she will be distracting. So, yes. And we started a little late, guys, because I just was like, last minute, tried to get all this stuff together. I wish I had turned one of my lights a little bit more. But I'm really, really excited for this whole new setup. It's going to be so great. All right. And just to start off with real quick, we have Colleen with a super sticker. Thank you so much, Colleen, and for being a member this morning. I do appreciate it so much. And we also have John. Keep up the great work, Brittany. You rock. Well, thank you, John. I hope you are doing well. I know your mother passed a little while ago, but I hope you are doing really, really well. And we also have one of our members, so May saying, hi from South Africa, Peoria. I love Pippa's bow tie. Why, thank you. Yes. So she has like a little crown collar. So it has even like a little fake jewel dangling from it. And I've also gotten her now the matching harness and the matching leash. So we are all matchy matchy. It is very cute. <laughs> okay. Let's start off with to go back up here. We have Tori Myers saying, I felt the same way when she allegedly was up in Utah. Yeah. I think people, nobody's really excited when Megan or Harry are in their neck of the woods. We also have Ritz saying, I bet Brooke and Katie have tuned her out while she droned on, on her with her word salad. Although I think Brooke may have been medicated or on something. Yeah. I wasn't really all that impressed with Brooke. Um, they they said a couple interesting things, although when Katie Kirk said that most young ladies tend to go to Facebook and Instagram, I'm like, ooh, Katie, it's TikTok now. You sound like you're a bit out of the touch there by saying Instagram and Facebook. Um, I think both of those are skewing older. Definitely Facebook, Instagram as well. And so, and then you got TikTok too. A Jessica re-gifted 10 Royal News Network memberships. Why, thank you so much, Jessica, because we will hopefully, um, I announced to my members, I figured out a way to do something really, really cool. So that's going to be a special live stream in a bit for some of the members. And then I also have coming up, like I said, I have a new live stream slash podcast I'll be doing. So I think what I'm going to do is hopefully going to do one of the first dry runs this week, just myself and then I'll open it up to members just to, to just to try it out with them and then what I do will probably be end up on a podcast somewhere and so just because I, I want to try it a bit myself first and see how long it takes before I wanted to do it this week guys but I don't know what it was I've just been super tired all week and so I'm hoping next week especially with the time change and everything we're leaping ahead I'm hoping I can get back to a better rhythm a bit I'm hoping because sleep, I just haven't gotten a lot of sleep this week. Catherine, member for five months. Oh, loving your new setup and seeing Miss Pippa. Why, thank you. Yes, I'm loving this new setup too. I still got to work on it. I think I need some sort of backlight here. And I got to finish my shelving unit. 
Um, once I do that, I will hopefully have, oh, and I forgot to turn my thingy on. Let's, let's do that. Let's do, I don't know. I'm feeling this color this morning. Turn you on and, ah, isn't that cool? I can change colors like to like infinity. It's awesome. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, let's see. We have, uh, <laughs> uh, Brooke Tori Meyer says Brooke Shields does not know about anxiety and depression. Something Megan knows nothing about does know about, um, anxiety and depression. Yes. A hundred percent. Rich says, I think the Utah thing was Photoshop. Notice the bronze on her face doesn't align with her neck and placement is off. She was there. She was not there and neither were her visible children. I imagine she probably was there, but the children again is, is a question mark because what I don't understand why they're going to Austin sans kids. Why do they both need to go? Because this is not a special like event, really. Why is Harry there? Who's watching the kids? Oh, I guess the nannies because that's probably who always watches the kids. Who knows? Okay. Allegedly, Brooke wasn't happy about it. I don't know which she wasn't happy about. I feel like there's a part of the stream that just doesn't get caught up here yet, which wasn't the case before. I don't know why. Olinda, oh, hello from Madrid. Hello. Hola. Gina B, if it's Saturday morning, drinking espresso and watching Britney live stream from sunny Las Vegas, happy to see you. It's maybe sunny where you are, but it's rainy and dreary where I am. Um, I'm hoping for maybe a smidge bit more of winter because it's been like almost hot the last couple of days. And I'm like, I'm not ready for this yet because <laughs> it was brutally hot last summer. And so I was hoping for cooler weather for a little bit longer. Maybe spring will be nice and long because I went when we went to Europe, um, for one of our mem one of our channel trips in September, I was like really excited for like fall weather and it was like brutally hot. And I was like, oh, I can't get a chip break. Sweden was cool though. Sweden was cool and cool. <laughs> right. So the exclusivity is it, the exclusivity of that ski resort in Utah just took a nose dive and residents are fuming. Gonna get crowded, really crowded. Oh, interesting. Becky said thanks. A Tori Allison says, Brittany, you are 100 percent right. Foam means in imitation not genuine fake or false yes i was like i put that on there and i was like will people know what that means <laughs> but she's a feminism she does she's not a feminist because she got everything she has because of a man because of the man she married because of her kids because of the con his connections and his family that's what makes her relevant no what nothing else does nothing else does at this point i mean literally she said nothing new in that event in in texas nothing new Everything was things she had said before. The stupid dish soap story. I'm like, is that all you have, honey? Like, you have to have more than that stupid dish soap story. I'm just so sick of hearing it. Like, she's just, I feel like so desperate for people to feel like this is a groundbreaking moment. Like, I feel like she hasn't gotten in her mind the accolades that she should for that moment. But it's it's dumb. <laughs> I hate to be frank, but it's just it's just a stupid thing, to be quite honest. It's just kind of lame. Uh, so Becky says, Brooke's Instagram posts today were questions of why Brooke? <laughs> yeah, and I think too, sometimes Hollywood people, they're very much in an echo chamber because if you watch their presentation, it was very much people who were completely out of touch with the vast majority of the country. And they they are totally out of touch. And so I think oftentimes too, they don't realize what bad reputation somebody has. They're like, oh, it's just Megan. Oh, it'll just be a nice fit. No. No, anything associated with Megan just seems to go really downhill really fast for anybody involved. And so if you guys are curious, Miss Pippa is now right now laying on the UGG blanket I have underneath my desk. Terry Meyer says, Rich, some of the Utahns are not happy who know about Megan, but we have a lot of ski resorts. That was a small resort. We have Becky. I heard Megan was trying out for the bachelor right before it started, according to the greeter of the show. Do we know any serious actress ever doing the bachelor? I don't think so, but Megan definitely, I mean, th the thing that I clocked on immediately with Megan, which I was a hundred percent right. And I'm so bummed I didn't have my channel. Cause then I could look and go, look, I was right. She has always, always struck me as somebody who was desperate, desperate for fame and fortune, desperate for fame. That is her whole thing that she, she has been searching for wanting for decades is that. And so to me, at least it's, it's one of those things where it's like, I see a hundred percent how she's just, she's gone from one disaster to another because she's so desperate that she can't do anything else. Sorry, my camera just moved. Um, and I was trying to remind myself of something. So, um, we will go to the next thing here. We have red squirrel. Hi everyone from Durham County, County Durham, England. 
Uh, Becky Berkshire lady said, Oh, you change your profile picture. Hi, Brittany and Miss Pippa from everyone in the UK. Why? Hello. She would be so Pippa would be so fun to take over to the UK sometime, but, um, yeah, we'll probably not do that, <laughs> but it would just be so fun. Cause she's just so, so stinking cute. That it would just be so fun. Tori Meyer says, here's to more healing for Princess Catherine and King Charles. Yes. Ruth from Kalamazoo, Michigan. Hi. We have Liz. Good morning from sunny East Coast, Wisconsin. That's just a banana bread. <laughs> Good morning from Nor NorCal. Finishing up my cuppa while I wait. Aw. Patricia says, Good morning, everyone. We have Liz E. I know many, many have issues with Brooke, but face it, you had to be on a panel with everyone. Does um I know many have issues with Brooke, but face it, if you had to be on a panel with never done anything, Megan, wouldn't you self-medicate too? It's so true. She hasn't done anything. Like her accomplishments are so minor. Like they had this really, really long intro for her, New York Times best-selling author. And then, and later they said just for Katie Kirk, best-selling author, Katie, who was probably also on the New York Times bestsellers list and was actually a bestseller. I picked up the bench, which is technically on my shelf for like five bucks at TJ Maxx. It was not this fantastic hit that Meghan Markle is portraying. It's just... She's so deluded and up on her own narcissism. It's like you haven't accomplished anything, though. And anything you've accomplished has simply been for your because of your husband at this point. Like she would be so much better off, especially since suits blew up. If she had dumped Harry while dating him and gone on from there, she made the stupid mistake of marrying him and continuing to try to create her facade. Like she just doesn't have a genuine bone in her body, really. And it just comes across all the time. Oh, Tiffany says, Lizzie, ooh, I'm also in Wisconsin Northeast looking for royal friends in my area. Would you be interested in meeting up for tea? Oh, that's so fun. That would be awesome. I, I would love it if people would like meet offline. That would be fun. I mean, uh, Red Squirrel says, does anyone else feel compelled to wipe that smirk off Megan's face? Yeah, I, I like I like the photos where she's like all up on herself and smirking. And it's like, girl, honey, seriously, you've not accomplished anything. I don't understand. I don't understand. Uh, Rebecca says that one of our members, good morning, everyone. Rebecca in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I hope everyone is in spirit today. I really, really appreciate all the sweat, tears, and energy Brittany puts into our channels. Why, thank you. Why, thank you. Especially when it's like, you feel it feels rough. But right after we get done with the live stream, I'll probably do a little bit and I will film a whole thing about Megan's thing in Texas. And I also have something else for Megan and her whole report on motherhood. That was something else that interesting that came out this week with the Gina Davis Institute. And I read through it, or at least their suggestions and literally their suggestions are have more fat moms. That, that was literally one of their suggestions and show your roots ladies. Cause that is the true essence of motherhood is if you show your roots on television and you are fat. Yeah. <laughs> And I'm not even joking. They said fat. They've said fat. Victoria says, good morning from Monterey, Mexico. Good morning. AP says, good morning from Ontario, Canada. Rebecca said, I meant to type good spirits for the typo. No worries at all. No worries at all. We have G GL Toe. Good morning from Southwest Georgia. Oh, Colleen says, good morning from the airport waiting to board my plane. I hope you have a good flight. I hope you have a good flight. I I haven't flown so far this year. I got a couple of trips I'm hoping to go on. So obviously Scotland, yes. And the Christmas market tour will not be available next week, but the week after for people to start signing up. And I'll send a link out to members early if you guys are interested. It'll go from, I believe, the 15th through the 22nd of December. So I'm very excited because the day before, uh, for before the trip, I'll hopefully go and cover the Swedish Nobels. I'm very excited. And it's in Germany and the Czech Republic. So that'll be a lot of fun. Tori Meyer says, Brooke Shields and Gina Davis, two actual actresses. Then we have reporter Katie Couric and then the liar who doesn't deserve to be on the panel, Meghan Markle. Yes. Like if Meghan Markle could just at one point admit, admit that her whole profile is a result singularly of her husband, I would at least have a modicum of respect for her. But you just always get the sense that she just believes that people are just now discovering her brilliance and that she was always like that they just ignored her and that she's now come into her own. It's like, no, honey, that's not it. You married the man. Like literally the oldest trick in the book to get attention or to get fame and fortune as a woman is to marry a man <laughs> who is wealthier and has a better title than you do. Like literally, it's the oldest thing ever. <laughs> And she can't admit it. 
Meg, good morning from Tacoma, Washington. And Bren W, good morning from Knoxville, Tennessee. It's a rainy day, but I can't wait to get caught up in the Royals and the Wannabes. Yes, oh yes. Did anyone hear that she got kicked off a stage on Wednesday night and escorted out? I did not hear that. I, I don't think that's probably true, but again, I don't know which, what what stage event would she be at? Because I'm sure, I'm still not sure why both of her and Harry need to go to, to Texas because it was just her event. And as far as I know, they have nothing else. So like, why was he there literally just to be in the crowd and give her kudos? Shows you a lot about their relationship. Deborah says, good morning from rainy South Carolina. Sheila Kelly. Hello, everyone. Hello, Susie. Good afternoon, Brittany from North Yorkshire. My dog Forrest shouts woof woof to Miss Pippa. So love the Saturday afternoon with you and all your followers. Why, thank you. Miss Pippa would say woof woof too, but she's sleeping. She's sleeping. Uh, Raji says, good morning from Ontario, Canada. We have Pat from Colorado. Kate, good morning, everyone. Michelle, good afternoon from sunny London. Hope you are all doing well. Oh, I wish I was in London. That'd be fun. Akami says, good morning, everyone from Gray, Indiana. Trina says, good morning. Good morning, Trina. This coming week, I'll have a total knee replaced and no more hobbling with the cane. The designer of Markle's last if it must be cringy. I did not know it was a full a material. Well, I hope your surgery goes well, Trina. Trina was on our London trip and oh my gosh, she did so amazingly. She like front of the line all the time. It was awesome. And um, the designer for Megan's last outfit. Yeah, it looks like pajamas. And there's especially the picture I got was there was only a small number of pictures from the Associated Press. And uh, I probably have explained this before, but I purchased all the pictures pretty much that I use in my thumbnails. And so those pictures obviously are expensive. So I usually go with the Associated Press, which is only $35 uh, instead of the Getty Images, which is like 175 for a small picture. And so anyways, but that in particular, I, when I was looking at the picture I purchased, I was like, oh my gosh, she looks terrible. That is an awful outfit. It looks like pajamas. It looks like pajamas and it's just like the color is awful. It's it's just awful. Becky says Gina put out a statement prior that she was happy to make in financial support. In other words, thanks for the check. Yeah. I mean, they participated in a check. And honestly, if you read through the report again, I'm, I'm not impressed with it. MJ Potier says, good morning for Northern California. I'm excited to catch a live from the beginning. My family is heading to San Francisco for the San Francisco Giants Fan Fest with my son's baseball teams. Oh, that'll be so fun. I hope you have fun. That's awesome. San Francisco, I, I really like San Francisco. Obviously, certain sections, you got to be really careful. Like There was a part of me that really wanted to go and observe and, and take photographs for um, Crown Princess Victoria of Sweden. Her husband, Prince Daniel, went to San Francisco. But I'm like, oh, San Francisco. I'm not sure. I was back there, and I think 2014 was the last time I was there. And it was actually pretty beautiful when I was there. So I had no complaints. But um, that was before things started to get really bad. So I hope you guys have a good time, though. Uh, Kimberly says, good morning, everyone. Hey, Brittany. Hello. <laughs> Diane says, hi, everyone. One of our members. We have Carmen. Good morning from Texas. Anna Valencia, good morning from Colombia. Aaron, good after morning from Florida. All right. Uh, Emily, good morning from West Virginia. Red Squirrel said to Trina, she slept in and just used the bed sheets. <laughs> so true. Uh, e. Williamson says, good morning from Arizona. Finally made it to a live. Good morning. We have Genevieve. Good morning from Ottawa, Canada. Sue M says, Megan Merkel is problem is that she doesn't realize that she is the problem. Exactly. Exactly. Her complaining about her treatment online. Yes. Sometimes it probably was unfair. And there's certain things that I don't like that people post about her. Um, like if people post something where like one of the deep fakes of her in a compromising situation, I say, please don't put that on my channel or something that's really sexually crude. I'm like, please don't put that on my, my, in my comments, I don't, I don't like that kind of thing. I don't think it's appropriate because you, there's a lot of things you can criticize Meghan Markle for. And so just stick to like the things we can prove the things that are just don't go down an ugly rabbit hole. But <laughs> it's, it's a reality too, is that her fans fuel so much of it as well. And they are awful, can be absolutely awful on social media and they've been awful to Catherine. And Megan doesn't say anything about it. It's all, it's all about her pregnancy. Oh, Archie and Lily. Oh, they were so mean to me. She doesn't even hardly really give, I think, proper condolences to like parents who have actually lost children. Because it's all about how, oh, people were so mean to me on social media. It's all about her. It's all about her. 
So we have Siba. Thank you so much for the tip. FYI, Katie Kirk is part of the Aspen Institute with Harry. Yes. And she actually didn't mention that on the panel. And what those people are uh, what those people are asking for is basically censorship. They want people censoring. And yes, a horrible things are said online. I get it. I get the abuse. I know Taz gets the abuse. Like everybody gets the abuse. And it can come from both sides. I've had it from both sides. I've had it from pro royals and and um pro Harry Megan crowd too. So it exists on all sides. But that is the element that is a risk you take when you raise your profile and free speech is attached. The sort of the risk. And yes, if it happens to other people who are not let's say big, big factors online, then that's probably not the case. But at the same time too, if you can't handle it, then it's, it's your job to get off social media. Like I wouldn't suggest if you're somebody who's incredibly sensitive and can't read a negative comment, then don't do this. You, it's, you just wouldn't be able to function. So you have to have, and not everybody can have those kind of strong background bone type things. And then as well, it's when it comes to parents and social media, it's, it's somewhat the parent's responsibility to manage the social media. Now they can't totally, that's really, really hard. Totally get that. Not, not distancing that at all, but that's sort of the reality of the situation too, is because it is meant for more for adults. And once you allow kids on it to do whatever they want, then you run into potential problems. <laughs> all right, Sharon, thank you so much for the super sticker this morning. I appreciate it. We also have Diz fan. Thank you so much for the tip. Did you see where she's trying to boost her PR back in the UK? If she ever went back to the UK, where she still lived on a private Island. Yes. I saw that. And I was like, are you serious right now? <laughs> you know how dismal your reputation is in the UK. It ain't going to get any better anytime soon. It's just not. It's just not. Uh, she's never going to be able to really capture what she did when she was initially a royal. Because again, the problem Meghan Markle has is that everything about her is contrived. Because she can't really be her authentic self. She's trying so hard to portray this con very contrived image. And so when it comes to her her life as a royal what happened was she showed she was trying to continue that contrived profile that she created when she was an actress on suits and everything but the problem was people saw through it and then also because once you see it more it's hard not to see it once you recognize how contrived she is it's it's hard to unsee that and then again you have all the things she did wrong like the fashion and everything like spending way too much money Obviously, you have the bullying of staff as well that came out in the Times and Harry and Meghan never refuted it, nor did she ever acknowledge in her little like boohoo session about her cyberbullying that she has been accused of being an actual in-person bully to her staff members, which is in some ways worse because if it's a random person online, you can kind of ignore them, or at least you should. But when it comes to like your actual personal staff, like they have to see you every day, like that's personal. That's like another level to be abusive to your staff who who have a power imbalance with you it's just so so wrong so anyways all right uh -huh. good morning from chicago can't wait to hear this one sej good morning from michigan adopt a gdx good very early morning from australia yes very early morning for you early early morning we have um pop El, hello from Norway. We have Betty from Oklahoma and Gina from Venezuela. Uh, I'm not really into it, but I am not really into it, but wasn't. Brooke Shields, the one who was, um, shared the postnatal depression, who was fighting Tom Cruise because he was sad that things don't exist. Yes, she was. She had this severe postpartum depression and she shared it in a book. I can't remember what the book was called, but yeah, that was when Tom Cruise did the whole like challenging with. Matt Lauer on the Today Show getting all nasty about psychiatric drugs and stuff. That was 100% Brooke Shields. Marion says, good morning. In an earlier post, you talked about Megan needing to pull back the curtain on herself. Do you think Kate will need to do the same about the sur her surgery? If so, and when and how much? No. The 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 difference between Megan and, and Catherine is completely different because Megan needs to pull back the curtain and just show who she actually is. Because I think Megan hides all her shallowness and altruism. She tries to be so charitable and everything, but it's all fake. And she could just acknowledge that, and at least in my opinion, I think she does all of this for the fame and fortune of it. Why not just admit that? Why not just be like shallow like the Kardashians? The reason we sort of like them is because they're real. They really just do want the money. 
<laughs> and I think there's something true to that. And I think Megan, again, she hides all of her everything in altruism and it's just not true. Like if she could just be acknowledge what she actually actually is interested in, I think that would be utterly helpful. When it comes to Catherine, she had surgery. That's totally different. That is a private personal matter that I don't really, I don't really have any issue with. Because again, I've been through surgery. It sucks. It takes a while to recover. Sometimes you never do fully recover. So I don't behoove her for taking time off. Uh, if it gets into late April and we still haven't seen her, then, then then other discussions should be had. But we have been told she won't be seen until Easter. I have no issue with it. But when it comes to Megan in particular and her image, her public image, people cannot connect if you're not true to yourself. And Megan Markle cannot be true to herself. And so that's why she flounders so severely so uh, again it's different angie says i doubt me thank you so much for the tip i doubt megan will show her roots crazy media says um where is kate but not K m's kids hmm thanks for your show yes very interesting comparison to like we demand to see kate but somehow we're totally okay not seeing archie and lily and i get it they've asked for privacy too but the thing is they talk about them all the time they make a big fuss about being parents and that then we never see them parent their children they never, we never see them with their children. They can not sh show their children that much and not talk about them. And I would be fine or share little stories every once in a while. But when you make a huge chunk of your public branding that you are parents and we should listen to you because you're parents and yet you never seem to go anywhere with your children, that doesn't work. That really doesn't work. So, and Catherine, um, is again, think going to recover just fine, but yeah, Megan definitely would never, ever show her roots. Like and I don't think I went on after this in my video. Maybe I'll add a little bit. But Megan doesn't do any of the things that she's subscribing these, you know, encouraging these women to do via this report. She's not doing any of that. Yeah, I have like so many issues with that report because I'm like, you guys are, you have such a superficial view of motherhood. If these are the things that you're concerned about, because a lot of them are very superficial things. Oh, they need to have a mom, see a mom with a messy house. Why? And also, not to mention the fact you only get 21 to 22 minutes with the sitcom. That's not enough time to really do all the things they're asking for. But again, Meghan Markle doesn't know how to produce a television show, so it shows. Okay. So, Barbara Brown, thank you so much for the tip. She talked about having humanity and denied knowing. She denied knowing her brother or sister, who gave her father an ultimatum, cut off his other children, and treated her in laws very. Horribly as well. So May Markle only wants humanity if it's it's turned around and given to her. She doesn't care if anybody else experiences it or not. She she's awful to other her fan, friends and family members, and oftentimes. So yeah, uh, Mima says good morning from Chile, Ma um, Massachusetts. I almost said Madison. <laughs> That's not right. Lindsay said good afternoon from Scotland. I can't wait to go to Scotland. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. All right, we have Azamas. Hey, sorry I'm late. No worries. Good morning. We have Josie. Good morning from Montpelier, Vermont. Asma says, Megan was, says with social media, we have lost our humanity. Or her sugars are the worst offenders. They are. And I will say again, I have experienced like hate from all sides on the Royal Divide, which I find, which I find good because that means to, I, I'm, I'm threading the line of trying to be a commentator on both sides. I can't always say Catherine William do everything perfectly. I don't want to be that person. So if I get criticism from their side too, that means I'm kind of even not really that. Anyways, if I get criticism from that side too, it kind of means I, I'm threading that line very well. But yes, they can all be awful. But I mean, I will say the worst thing was when I was in Germany, like hundreds of, and maybe even thousand miles, well, probably more hundreds of miles away from Dusseldorf. I was in Munich and somehow I was stalking Harry and Meghan when the Victus games hadn't even begun yet. That was not fun. <laughs> that was, that was crazy. That was absolutely crazy. Michelle says, hi all from London, UK. So appalled, but not surprised by Meghan using women's state to serve up self-serving rhetoric because that's all she can do. It's just all she can do. Yeah, Sharon says, cannot say for the whole chat, but wanted to say hello from, I'm not sure. But hello, hello. Tori Meyer says, I believe zero of what Megan says. I think a lot of people feel that way. Oh, it's like pouring outside my house right now. You probably can't hear it, but I just, I was like, wow. I was like, how has it become like spring already and we're getting storms? Oh, doesn't seem quite right yet. Jenna Claire says, it seems like the media isn't jumping on the Meghan Markle PR stunt at South by Southwest as much as usual. Though I'd like to see some pushback on our gaslighting. Glad the, to see them perhaps losing interest. 
Yes. And I think the thing too is, and Meghan Markle being a narcissist, she obviously loves any column inches she gets. However, oftentimes they're making fun of her. The problem is Harry and Meghan are not entertaining for the right reasons. They're entertaining because people kind of sort of make fun of them. And so that is definitely the case there as well. Care Bear says, I live in Austin. Local newspapers refuse to call her the Duchess of Sussex. They use Meghan Markle. This is not a big deal in Austin. Yeah, like they should call her the Duchess, uh, the Meghan Markle. Like most people anymore call her Meghan Markle. And I, I meant to do put this on Twitter and I didn't get to. It's like, hmm, isn't it rather interesting that the ladies on the panel could call her Meghan, but the people who are helping to run the Invictus Games had to call her ma'am. Just got to throw that out there. This fan says, can we please get some young blood in Beatrice and Zara? Ugh. Queen Camilla has done a great job and looking forward to the Commonwealth Day and Maudie's service. Yes, I and Maudie Mon service. I am all for including Beatrice. I don't think Zara really, Zara's too far down the line of succession. She just is. But Beatrice and Eugenie, I think would be fine working royals. You even have Lady Louise and her brother James. Like they need more like this. Slim down monarchy approach is not working. It's it's clearly like immediately hit a roadblock, basically, um, especially with two or three kind of out at the same time. You know, we have all four players kind of in and out like that doesn't work. Yeah, this is one of the best things is knowing where everyone is from. Yes, I agree. Laura says, good morning, Brittany. And Miss Pippa, she says, good morning. She's still sleeping on the blanket. Uh, Regis Col College says, good morning, Brittany. And all it has been a long time since I've been able to catch a live stream. Brittany, you always have give great commentary. Why, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Rich says, she went from saying age to my husband, the nobody. Yep. Because it's all about her. It's all a thousand percent about her. Missy Lulu says, good morning, beautiful piece from Be Palm Beach, Florida. Azima says, why is Megan constantly getting new prof PR people? I, I should do a whole video on this too, because I think Megan Merkel uses her PR team as a crutch. She doesn't want to do the work. She wants the PR to do all the work for her. And at some point that is not going to work. And that's starting to hit a roadblock because at some point it's just not going to, it's not going to work. So <laughs> Rich says ultra professional set up Brittany. Why? Thank you. I think I still need to work on getting the lights quite right, but it's nice to have this up and running and the size to have the actual camera. We need to get a different lens at some point. Sorry. I'm, I'm talking all to myself and you guys probably don't care, but this is all like technical things. I need to like an additional tripod cause I hate moving my tripod up and down for the different settings. And so, um, yeah, we'll, we'll figure something out, but I'm very excited. It's awesome to have a new setup. And if I, I just have to get one thing out of this room, which is a very large couple of things, but once I can do that, this room will really be hopping, really, really be hopping. Maria says, good afternoon from Worthing West Sussex, England and kisses to Miss Pippa. Why? Thank you. She says hello too. Hi, Wendy. I hope you are doing well. Catherine says, good morning, Brittany, our new rescue puppy, Max, and greetings to Max Pippa. Hi, Max. I hope he is adjusting well. <laughs> Sue M says she didn't acknowledge the biggest bullies, the Sussex squad. Yes. Wendy says, sweet little Pippa. She is the sweetest guy. She really is quite sweet. Although she has a bit of a velociraptor in her. Some guy who, uh, well, my had my friend pets at one time and she was able as well to take her on a walk. And the guy was apparently was like, oh, this, you know, Pippa, this little itty bitty dog. But then he decided that she was a mix between a velociraptor and a German shepherd. So Miss Pippa, guys, she is, she is all that and more. Becky says, yay, I finally made it back for a live stream. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Miss Pippa. Good morning. Oh, Sharon gave a super sticker. Thank you so much, Sharon. And we also have Nelly7. Four ninety nine, dollars some bones for Miss Pippa. Why, thank you. She loves her bones and her treats, guys. As She gets fussy at me in the night sometimes. And she's like, I want my bone. And I was like, okay. But sometimes I have to say no. <laughs> she's already had too many. And the doctor says she's too overweight. So um, Asima says, any news on Harry appealing? No, we haven't heard anything about that yet. Aww. Cheryl says, bye-bye, Miss Pippa. She says, bye-bye. Wendy says, Our, um, a real royal pilot, how often does he fly? So this is probably in reference to King Wilhelm Alexander of the Netherlands, who is a commercial airlines co-pilot and I, slash pilot. I don't know. I think he mostly co-pilots, but he can obviously pilot as well. And so he does this. I don't know how often he does this, but somebody caught a picture of him walking through uh, the airport in Amsterdam in his pilot's uniform with another KLM pilot, and he was going to fly commercial airlines. So if you are in the Netherlands and you are flying 
which I imagine is very, very short distances between one point of the country and the other because it's quite small or maybe outside your um, outside the country, you might be flown by His Majesty the King, which I think would be so cool. <laughs> be so cool. Um, I'd be like, oh. Oh, Fire Elemental became a YouTube member. Oh, I thank you so much, Fire Elemental. I can't wait to share more with you guys. Tori Meyer says, if I was on a panel with Megan, I would question her on everything she says and tell her she's jealous of her sister-in-law. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I would quite do that, but I think I would push back against, I, I would have asked her, I was like, well, what about your what your sister-in-law is going through? <laughs> and you could probably see a little bit of microaggression, I'm sure, on her face before she goes, well, you know, she she makes up something. So uh, can you show us a photo of this tiara I've heard called the Queen Mother's Double Meander Tiara? I don't know. It'll be to pen. Um, Mother's Double Meander. There are some in the vaults that we just haven't seen. And this one is one that I think for most time we just really haven't. Ah. Here's a picture of it. And we have not seen, I think she wore it one time or something, but yeah, that's it. So that would be very cool to see. There's so much in the British vaults we just don't have access to. So our, um, yeah, it would be awesome. See something like that. All right. Uh, Meow says she received bullying. Yes, she does believe that. She does believe that. And she... And I, I do see awful things said about her on Twitter. And like I said, I try to push back as something that I think is especially crude and stuff. And I try not to like the post, you know, calling her kids fake and everything because I just don't really want to go there. But she, as well, her fans, her audience has also bullied Catherine, bullied people like me and Taz and other people. And so it was just like, okay, so it only matters if you are the like the victim of it. It doesn't matter if anybody else is. Because, I mean, again, she didn't even really give, I feel like, that much of a platform to parents who have, whose children have died because of online bullying. Because, again, it's all about her. It's all about her. Liz says, your new office looks great. Why, thank you. Yes, it's, it's, I'm, I am pretty thrilled with it. Maya Wilson says, yeah, I made it to today. Hello, everyone from San Francisco. Hello. We have Gemstone Girl. Afternoon from Bath, UK. Laner says, hello from Northern Cal. We have a couple others. And Janice says, Aaron Haynes should have asked Meghan Markle about the attacks on Catherine, her opinion on Sussex Barons, spreading rumors. You know, Meghan would have just brought it back to herself. Yes, very true. Very true. And so... You know, it, it, or she would have gone something like, well, it wasn't as bad as what I experienced. And I was, you know, it's just those sorts of things. It's like she can, just can never seem to acknowledge somebody else's pain. She always, again, brings it back to herself. Becky said, thank you, Jessica Reed. <laughs> yeah, Siva says, if you just disagree with Meghan Markle or call her out on a lie, she thinks she's bullied. Yes, that too. So that's the thing, again, that Harry and Meghan, like the British media, they have a couple of articles that you could say were in poor taste and maybe you could argue maybe leaned racist, but then they smear the whole industry with that same that same description. Well, they must all be like that. Well, it's the same thing with the bullies. Yes, there are some people who are spreading conspiracies and those sorts of things on social media. But then yet, at the same time as well, there are a lot of people like me who just call her out on her BS. <laughs> and I would get slapped with the same thing because she specifically mentioned YouTube. And I was like, oh, I know she's talking about a couple of people. And we're not like, I'm not spreading conspiracies. Like, I don't think it's necessarily a conspiracy to say when you're there's reports about your husband spending nights away at a hotel all the time that, hey, your marriage might be on the rocks um, because you guys have nothing in common, really. You never did. And so it's not necessarily that's not a conspiracy. That's just going off. That's why I go off of all mainstream reports and why by and large my channel is totally fine because I oh go over mainstream reports. I don't go down rabbit holes. I don't need to go into. Kathy says, I love love the sound with the new mic is set up. Yes, the sound is so much better. So much better. I did a reaction video to like my first video for for my highest tier members because I was like, oh, I haven't watched my first video in a really long time. The funny thing is my outro is the same. Uh, but I was just like, oh, let's try it. And I was like, oh my gosh, the sound, like compare the sound compared to what I sounded like 
via the video with, with mostly the same equipment I have now versus this guy is just so different. This guy sounds so good, but he's also more expensive. So it's probably partly why. So I'm really excited about him, but I had technical difficulties this week too. That's why I was a little bit behind too. I just had a, like my computer wouldn't connect to him and then the feedback was weird and I got, well, I should try to see if my buttons work. There's a button on here that makes me sound like a monster. I don't know if it works, but we'll have to try it, baby. Because <laughs> that was just really funny. Okay, Terry says, gifted five Royal News Network memberships. Thank you so much, Terry. And we also have Peggy here. Good morning from Michigan. Thank you so much. Your new setup looks wonderful. The microphone is giving me Brett Cooper vibe. Looking forward to your videos on the South by Southwest panel and more thoughts with youth Megan. Yes, thank you. Yeah, and this is what like Joe Rogan and Brett Cooper, like you'll see these are sure microphones and you'll see that these are what they use. I might get a kind of the lower tier one for travel because I think it can can connect via USB. But yeah, I wanted the best sound. And I don't think I've ever gone wrong as I've grown this channel and everything, investing in good equipment because it serves me well later. Because yeah, things might start off small, but they serve me so much better later as I go down the line. So actually the camera I'm using here, I bought, and I remember telling the guy I had 6,000 subscribers. I was so, so excited. And so I bought this camera that it wasn't, it wasn't terribly, terribly expensive. Obviously my, I don't have it in here, but my main camera I use for pictures is very expensive, but this one is, is less so than that. But I was, I got that one. Cause I was like, I wanted a nice video camera so I can continue growing and it's done really well for me. So it was a good, good investment. Uh, Kathy says busy week. I still don't understand why Megan was on the panel because she paid for it. <laughs> That's essentially why as she paid for it. And so she just, yeah, it's just kind of dull. And honestly, she says again, nothing that she hasn't said 50 million times already. Like it was just a regurgitation of archetypes. Let's see. I should see if that's still trending. Cause for a while it was trending and I was like, wait, what? What? Okay. Now that might do not do what I wanted to do. Um, and then she was like at number two. And I'm like, how are you at number two? <laughs> it's an old podcast, but none of her episodes are in the top 200 episodes. And it runs about a day or so behind, I noticed. But I was like, still, like, what's going on? Yeah, Archetypes is still number two. And I don't understand why episodes aren't the top of anything. So, yeah, I still don't understand. Somebody must be reading, like, watching hers on, like, like a bunch of times or like saying follow, follow, follow for a podcast that doesn't exist. But so uh Kathy says, love the new mic and setup. I thank you. I think I maybe said that got that earlier. Shay, hello from Texas. Glad I can watch at work. And well, I'm glad you can too. <laughs> she has bullied her sister. What a fraud. Yes. And well, I mean, not even just that. I mean, I really don't think the Samantha Markle is that close to Megan. I don't really think it's bullying and Samantha as quite as much, as, except for apathy, I think is is the greater description there. But Megan has definitely 100%. She's been accused, I think, pretty strongly of being a bully towards her staff members, 100%. <laughs> Megan, like Reagan says, I'm glad I watched South by Southwest. It was an opportunity to pull, you know, to plug all their projects and for Megan to tell she, she is not okay for others to criticize her because she's also a woman. Yeah, it was interesting, though. I, I got up because it was on the live stream and I didn't realize this till later. So I ended up having to drive home and I went somewhere and it took me a while to get home and I had to listen to the whole thing. And it was, oh, it was nails on a chalkboard. Annoying oftentimes. And but I, I got on back on the live stream later. And what I found was interesting was some guy was arguing is like, yeah, you need to make politics your religion. And I'm like, dude, no, don't do that. Your religion should give you some sort of greater fulfillment in life and politics will not give you that politics will not give you that az royal watcher wow jessica's so kind of you oh thank you or thank you to jessica ah uh, nana says thank you Brittany, for making special perks for subscribers i try to i don't i always feel like i fail but i really try i try so hopefully we'll get better and better niners girl said good morning everyone good morning Josie says Megan doesn't like to, doesn't come close to being hounded by real paparazzi like Brooke Shields. She's had controversy like her mother making her pose nude and pretty baby. Yes, 100%. And she hasn't even had to deal with it like like 
Catherine did in the initial years of her marriage, of her dating William. She hasn't dealt with any of that. Linda says, I love hearing about Jess Prince William. He is a superstar. Oh, Jessica gave numbers. Yes. Thank you so much, Jessica. Greatly appreciated. Kathy Riker says, good morning, Brittany, and everyone looking great. I thank you all. Sharon says, good morning, Brittany. Hello from Biscuit and Coco Chanel to Miss Pippa. Aww. Wendy says, how would you promote Megan if you were hired to do her PR? That's a good question. An interesting question. Number one, I would tell her probably to drop the title. I don't think the title gains her much, really, at the end of the day. I think that title rubs people the wrong way. And it should be used sparingly. It should be used sparingly. I'd also tell her is that she needs to drop like the fake, oh, we're going to make our altruism entertainment. Just drop that. You need to entertain. You need to work. You need to make a podcast. You need to be able to produce things quickly. You need to stop all this kind of nonsense. Stop traveling for fun things. Like, I think the series for like the fall, especially, I think after the Invictus Games, it just seemed like they were going to concert after concert after concert. Like, just stop that. You need to be seen working and doing something. Because I think one of the big things after a while you just get tired with with Harry and Meghan is that you feel like all they have are their titles, that they don't have anything else but those titles. And so the best thing they can do really is work, have a product that you can sell, whether it's content or not. And I would also tell them you need to listen to the people who are a lot more accomplished and competent than you are, because you've got maybe the title and the profile, but you don't have any of the skills to back it up in terms of your public image. You just don't have any of those. So you need to be able to get those. Otherwise, right now, you're just basically perpetually annoying people like me. <laughs> Katarina says, hello, everyone. Greetings from Finland. Thank you so much. Oh, um, Becky says, I love that keyboard with all the colors, Brittany. Yes, yeah, so this thing is um, the Rode Pro Roadcaster Pro. So this is kind of, Technology, guys, has imp increased so much. And honestly, I probably do not do not use this thing to its full potential by any stretch of the imagination. But it's basically a radio, like, you know, those big boards they used to have in radio stations, you know, think of Frasier or something, those big things. That's this. <laughs> That's this, actually. That's what that how that functions, which is amazing when you think about it, that technology has grown to that level. So there's different buttons. And one of these buttons... Okay, we'll see. I don't know. I won't be able to hear it, but oh, maybe, maybe. Can I hear myself in here? Can I hear myself? Well, I can't hear myself, but maybe if I press this button, it makes my voice into a monster. <laughs> Isn't that fun? If it didn't show up, then I don't know what to tell you, but I do think that's funny. So, anyways, we will turn that off now, though, because <laughs> that would probably get annoying. But <laughs> uh, we have uh, tea with Mima. My Miss Sparkle says hello to Miss Pippa. Why, thank you so much for the tip. And Miss Pippa says hi back. Oh, she's so curled up. It's so cute. It's so cute. <laughs> AZ Royal Watcher says, who's watching the kids? Great question. Again, when you go to a panel and make a fuss about being a mother and then you're there with your husband and not your children, who's watching your children? I would guess the nannies. Brittany, um, what did you think of Megan's outfit? Love your opinions. It reminded me of PJs, honestly. It, it's, 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 it was a little odd. I don't think it particularly did her any favors, but most of her fashion does not. I didn't think from a distance it was terribly bad, but up close it was worse. <laughs> Barra Elementa says Harry and Marcus were there for such a minor talk. Yes, it was only an hour. It was in the middle of the day. I usually think of keynotes at like the end of the day. And honestly, as well, I had this idea for like um, a video and I was like, not sure if I should do it because <laughs> it's like, it seems like there were, there are three people in their marriage, Harry, Megan, and Marcus. <laughs> Marcus must always be there. Jan says, greetings from central Illinois. Greetings. <laughs> uh, Arizona says, who's watching the kids? Why does anyone else watch Sister Wise? LOL, what do the nannies do? Yeah. Uh, it's Megan, like Reagan says that there was a part where Megan said young mothers are scrolling endlessly on social media. Um, maybe if you had, uh, <laughs> if you have a nanny, no mom has, young mom has time for that. No. And again, it's, it's, it's comes with, I mean, me, I'm probably weird. I'm probably weird, but I know what, and you do suffer from a little bit of envy, but my envy is more of, I really wish I could afford those pair of shoes. I really wish I could have that handbag. Those are like my things. Cause I know the image that they show with this picture of her family on Instagram. Like I know it's fake. I know the kids are messy. They fight, they, they do all the things that normal kids do and they have issues like any normal family does. 
And so, but I know some people really struggle with comparing themselves to the people they see on social media. And if that is something that you struggle with, then you might not need to get off social media. I have um, a childhood friend and she ended up having to get off social media because she was struggling with something. And I was like, I totally get it. I totally get it. If, if it's something where it's, it's become harder for you to do certain things because you're constantly comparing yourself to what you don't have compared to others on social media, then that's not, that's not what you should be doing. Um, that it may be healthier for you to not be on social media, but I understand the trouble too, because so many people are on it and everything, but yeah, it's, it's sort of one of those hard, hard things, but yes, no mom is constantly struggling going through Instagram. And what does that tell you more about Megan than herself? Is that probably Megan is the one scrolling through social media. Why her nanny takes care of her children. Yes. Yes. So Tanya says it's rainy and dreary in DC too. It must be a Southern thing right now. Cause everybody's under rain. <laughs> Cheryl says it's been warmer here in Oklahoma. And I wanted more winter before dealing with allergies. Me too. I wanted more winter too. NAA says though spring starts one day early this year on the 20th EA spring. Yeah, it's not going to be. I mean, I'm I'm excited for spring, but I just don't want it to be summer yet. Not ready for summer. I have a lot of spring dresses. I, I'm excited to wear them, but I don't want summer, guys. I don't want summer. Kim at 22 says Meghan Markle's bestie Marcus right in front, too. Yep, because again, there seems to be three people in this marriage. Harry, Meghan, and Marcus. <laughs> what is the relationship between Meghan and Marcus? Well, she, he's like a part of the Soho house, so he facilitated a lot of this stuff. And remember, Meghan Markle is friends with people who benefit her in some way or who are just like her, people who are also desperate for fame and fortune. Those are the only people she can really be friends with. So that tells you a lot about Marcus if he's one of the people, few people who can really, really be friends with her or survive still being friends with her. All right, we have Susan on. Hello, who is Marcus? Thank you so much for the tip. So his name is Marcus Anderson, and he is part of the Soho House team that Megan is sort of, not team, a Soho House group that Megan is a part of. And he is very much like been around, like he's like there like all the time with them. And it's almost getting odd. Is he part of their PR team? And I just don't know. I don't know. I, I just really don't. <laughs> Bree says feminist. Yes. Yeah, so that's that's the best thing I could think of. And I was like, cause I wanted to, I, I wanted to leave with Meghan Markle as a fake feminist for the main video, but um, I just couldn't figure out how to, I feel like I needed something. I like short pithy things for the live streams. Farrell Element says she just proved she's not a biological mom. Mothers and newborns had no time for social media. Seriously. If social media is causing anxiety, turn it off, sweetie. Yes. Again, there's that personal accountability thing. Like there was, um, sorry, I bumped that. Has let me know about this account and this person had been posting pictures of me and some pictures from family. They had gotten off social media and stuff like that. And I, I did go through and like tag like every single picture that was not, they weren't authorized to use. And I think maybe that worked, but I was spending too much time going through and like checking on their channel constantly. And I was like, I just don't need to do that. Just let it go. It's, it is going to be what it is. And the best thing I can do is ignore it because then it'll probably go away because they're not getting a reaction because they want the reaction. And so they're probably still doing it. I don't know. But I think it's just best for me just to ignore them because I'm still going to do what I'm going to do. And I can't I don't want to give anybody the belief that they can impact what I'm saying. Josie Blue Blue Ea yeah, says Brooke Shields had her pretty baby documentary last year on Hulu. I'm on it, she's raised two beautiful young ladies. Yes. And I did. I, I, I saw part of it when I was at the gym and it did actually look very good. Laura says, Hey, from Southwest, sorry. Hey, from West Texas. I lived in Austin for over 40 years and still go there to visit family. South by South West used to be a big deal. It's sad that she had to, she is so hard up for PR. She bought her way in. Yes. Pinkie Pie said, who, um, whoever said that this one's wife is intelligent. She does not see beyond three seconds into the future. Yeah. She's not great at strategy. She really stinks at it. She really stinks at him. Megan Markle's beige outfit looked like she was wearing a potato sack. Why doesn't anyone tell her her sense of style is lacking? Because she doesn't want to hear any negativity. We've we've heard this in reports too. No, no negativity. But at the end of the day, you kind of need it. It's Megan like Reagan says, I enjoyed Brooke answering some of Megan's questions instead. Yes. And it took too long to get to Katie Kirk and Brooke Shields because I was like, they've accomplished something. Now, I can't speak for the other woman on the panel, but I was like, but they've really accomplished something. 
Uh, Kim McMorris says, hi, Brittany, finally kind of live, excited. I'm a night owl, so I miss these things sometimes. Really love your channel. And Jen at uh, Housewives Recap touts you all the time. Oh, hey, thank you. Jane Bucks fan says, we need a Pippa cam. Yes, I'm honestly thinking of doing a little Pippa channel. And I have an idea. Like, she needs a little mini desk in here so she can be the boss babe. And keep me into account. AZ uh, World Watcher says she just repeats herself. She has nothing new to say. She's repeating how often she roasts chicken or how she stays off social media. Seemingly know what she says about her, though. Or the dish soap story. Yeah, she has nothing else. She has nothing else. If you're telling the dish story for, like, the 50th time, we've all heard it. Like, so many times. Like, is that literally all you have? That is all she has. That must be her greatest accomplishment. Jeff says her jewel swinging while she walking in um, South by Southwest. What uh, the film of her coming on stage. Yeah, she was very excited to come on stage. She got maybe a little bit more of a cheer than other people, but not that much. Really, it wasn't that impressive. And um, and it was interesting, too, is the pinky ring is gone. The, you know, the pretentious three carat diamond pinky ring. Suddenly that one's disappeared again. <laughs> the whole thing was a farce, as CJ says. It's just that Brooke Shields and Kitty Kirk know how to actually speak, even though all contrived. Meghan Markle is a perpetual hamster wheel of nothingness. Oh, I like that. Perpetual hamster wheel of nothingness. Yeah, she has nothing new or interesting to say. Now, sometimes I struggle with, I think I repeat myself sometimes in videos, and I know I do. And if you're an avid watcher and seen everything, I'm sure you know that. Like, I repeat, like, the hierarchy thing a lot. And that's something, though, too, because that's the first time somebody's seen the video. And so, or see me. And so they, they may not know that. And so that's always important to sort of reiterate some of those things. But I, I feel like when I can, sometimes I try to find like new things or figure out new things or try to add interesting anecdotes or something. So I feel like I have for more, I was like, I just can't believe Meghan Markle is at this point. And she's like repeating the same stinking gosh darn stories. Like think of something else. Like, but at the end of the day, I always come to the thing of, Meghan Markle is an incredibly shallow person who thinks she has depth, but she doesn't. She thinks she's the deep end of the pool when she's really the kiddie pool that's only like a foot deep. Betty, Betty Thomas says, at the in the end of the day, that's one of my favorite phrases, it's her actions that will define her. She can rehearse and sound intelligent, but all there but all there is to it, just flowery words for good publicity. Yes. And she's, she's, she does that very well. They're very flowery words, but when you really think about them, they're pretty empty. They don't really have anything to say. They don't really have anything of depth to examine. So, uh, Ren uh, Renata says the dish up saga was a class project, not her initiative. Yes. And it's a, something that, was not a result of one single girl writing letters, Meghan Markle. You are an adult now. Believing that you single-handedly changed a commercial is the equivalent of you still believing in Santa Claus. You need to stop that. It's silly. We all know it's silly. Anybody, any adult with a modicum of intelligence knows what you're saying is not true. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's a, it's a lie you've told yourself. It's a lie you've completely told yourself. <laughs> Isabel says, yes, a puppy cam. Good suggestions, Jane Bucks fan. Yeah, actually, there is a guy I watch, and he does have a, a webcam on his um on his dog. And then I think it's actually, well, I need to get a new setup. I need I think I need a thingy with more thingies to plug into the thingy. <laughs> I know that didn't make any sense, but I need more thingies to plug into the thingy to plug into the thingy. Uh, so I need more like little plugs to, to get everything going. But yeah, I do have a webcam. I could probably put on her. I don't know. Well, let's see. Okay. This is a wrong cord. We shall see guys. But let's keep going. But I may I may be able to grant your wish and give you a little bit of a view of the Pippa. Although the floor night might not be the best view, but she she definitely does have a little little space that maybe I can offer her. Okay. Um Jen says Megzi really has no friends. Just look at yesterday's outfit. It's so awful. Yes. She thinks she looks good though. Oh, that's not what I need. Never mind. I won't be able to do it right now, guys. Sorry. I thought that was a different chord. 
Margaret says, Azima, thank you for that. I wonder why she was, if she was eyeing him up for the next cash catch after Harry. No, apparently, I think you're talking about Marcus. Marcus, as far as I'm aware, is gay. So Bonnie from Texas says, I'm wondering how the other ladies truly felt about Megan being on the South by Southwest panel. At least the others have actual acting and journalism achievements. Yes, they have actual achievements. Megan's sole achievement, again, for a event basically about feminism, her sole achievement is marrying a man. That's her sole achievement. Isabel says, what a beautiful name, Lady Jane. Yes. Hi, all from Fiona from Glasgow. Hi, good day from Darlington, England. Really enjoy your chats. Keep it up. Why, thank you. <laughs> five bucks at TJ Mack from AZ Royal Watcher. Yes, it was about five bucks, I think. And somebody got it for like $2 from TJ Maxx. And I was like, oh, I'll see if I can get it. Uh, Brenda says, how does she get away with the credentials, she says. I don't know. Don't know why people don't call her on stuff more. Tracy says, huge fan of aqua stones. However, I have to agree the Brazilian stone jewelry is a bit too overwhelming. Yes, I did I did a tiara video on a couple of aquamarine tiaras. Two that I love, one that I loathe, and one that I'm like kind of iffy on, but one of them, the Brazilian aquamarine tiara that Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II designed, I think is still one of the ugliest things I've ever seen. Sorry. Well, not really all that sorry, to be honest. Uh, Missy Lulu says, Brooke has wrote two books. One when she was in Princeton University and spoken so much about postpartum depression. Yes. Uh, Sean says, can you please show the tiara, the photo of the tiara I've heard called the Queen's Double Meander? I did earlier. Why does Megan and Harry feel superior to everyone? Because they are just, they're very conceited. <laughs> Oh, Sharon um, Cup Run says, I, Brittany, I tried to send a super chat, but I cannot get it to send. I'm so sorry. I, I don't I don't know quite honestly how it works. Oh, I, it did come through. I did see it. There it is. We do have a couple other here real quick. We have Martha. Thank you so much for the super sticker. I do appreciate it this morning. And Valerie as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> All right, we have Carrie. Good afternoon from Norway, which I'm hoping to go to this year. I'm still really hoping to cover the Scandinavian rail tour with Denmark and everything, but, 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 it all depends on if I can get press credentials to the TR events. If I can't get those, I probably won't go because really the whole purpose of to get more content for the T, well, for the channel in general, but also for the TRs. Kathy says, Congratulations on two years. You're going strong. Why, thank you. Jan. Jan, or maybe it's Jan. Uh, good afternoon from the north of France. Bonjour. Pick says, hi, Brittany. Your analysis is often impressive on spot on. If they make an offer you a million dollars to do her PR, would you take the job? Probably not. I don't think I could work with somebody like Megan. Because I, I kind of did not, it wasn't really PR, but I kind of worked with somebody who had a bigger profile than me. And this person just didn't really want to do the work and then got frustrated when things didn't go quite the way they wanted to. The ironic thing is now is I'm far more successful than they are in a lot of ways, <laughs> which is kind of the irony. Uh, but I, I, I just don't think I could do it. I'd prefer to try to make my million dollars doing what I'm doing myself rather than relying on Megan. Cause as soon, well, I mean, maybe I would just last for a year, get the million bucks and then bow out. <laughs> It would be fascinating to see what is going on behind the scenes, but then I'd probably be have to require to sign an NDA and I would not want to sign an NDA. I would not want to do that. Malcolm says the queen was constantly abused by her. She stood up to her. Our wonderful queen brings tears to our eyes. I don't think Meghan Markle was really abusive towards the queens, but I don't think she was necessarily kind. Well, I think she was kind. I think Meghan Markle knew where her bread was buttered. And didn't want to offend the queen ever. But at the same time, she was not, at the end of the day, kind to her. This fan says, good morning, Brittany. Time to get some new. Yeah, I, we talked about this one earlier. Just to have Pinkie Pie. Brittany, what do you think of the underwear story here? You have Las Vegas laugh so hard. Neil Ver, Neil's video had me in tears. I think that's hysterical. I think that's hysterical. So apparently a stripper of some sort who his, was part of Harry's little drunken romp in Las Vegas many years ago was selling some of his clothes or something or selling the nude pics. And I'm like, oh, that's funny. Water says apparently Archibald helped paid to host South by Southwest. And that's why she's there. Yes. Yes. 
Amelia Media, all one word on Instagram, had a great video on her Insta yesterday about South by Southwest. I have to check that out. I've, I've heard about the South by Southwest um, conference. I looked into if they had like a digital viewing option. And ironically, they ended up having that. And I didn't think they did, but they did it for free. And I thought you'd have to pay. But anyways, like to go to the conference, it's like well over a thousand dollars. It's very expensive. Missy Lulu says, and I, and to think about it, Brooke and Andre Agassi were powerhouse couple and they were stalked by the paps like Harry and Megan haven't and never will experience. Yes. Yes. Harry and Megan are not stalked by the paparazzi. She calls them. Why? Because we never, well, number one, we never catch her with our children. Now that could be two reasons, either that she doesn't ever have her children or she arranges the paparazzi strolls and never has her children. So, oh yes. And we did answer that already. Good morning from Dallas. Becky says, why all the hubbub about Princess Catherine be being seen riding in her mother's car? I don't understand why people are panicking over not seeing Catherine. She's not coming back until Easter. I don't know. I did a whole video on it. I think it's stupid. I think the whole where is Catherine thing is stupid. They told us she would be out till Easter. It's not Easter. Chris says, I want Harry to file for divorce from Meghan Markle and end this marriage right now. Deport back to the United Kingdom. Well, I don't think that'll happen quite yet. We'll see. Chair from Tennessee said, tuned in to hear RNN's take on the South by Southwest channel. Also great to see a video about the bullying claims by the vintage read rebuttal Meghan Markle of South by Southwest. Yes. Uh, per Majesty the Queen, why thank you so much for the tip. Every time Megan talks about one of her causes, she always sounds the same. If I hear her say, a seat at the table one more time, I will vomit. Yes, she repeats herself constantly. I mean, I do too, to be quite honest. But you, when you have as many videos as I do, it's hard to avoid to a certain extent. That's why I enjoy new events because then I can react to new things. But it is kind of interesting to see, like, we see her in a, some ways so infrequently. Now, there are stories constantly, but we actually see her and hear her talk so infrequently. And yet she says the same thing every single time. This woman does not have an original thought. She really just repeats the same thing over and over again. All right, we have Fire Elemental as well. Thank you so much for the super sticker this morning. Harry was not th was there because they are leaving for a much needed vacation right after Austin. Yes, life is so hard for them. It is so hard. Things are going well. Nobody likes them at Netflix. <laughs> but she did. It was interesting, too, because she did compliment the next Netflix person. Again, I'll do a whole video on it. I'll bring out every little thing. But I thought it was interesting that she kept complimenting her. And again, the, the irony of a woman who uses and abuses a royal title Calling for equity is ridiculous. She doesn't understand irony. Happy troll from Norway. Oh, thank you so much. Is that a picture of the Northern Lights you took? That'd be so cool to see. Again, I'm really hoping to cover the Swedish Nobels in December because I'm so excited. Sarah says she is not a humanitarian. What about the Baca women who use Netflix platform to attack women in her 90s? Feminist, humanitarian, no. No, don't think so. Embarrassment to women and a bully. Yeah, she's she's not a feminist. She's not a feminist. Sharon says, good morning. I've been working on for my business. I've been trying to send it. Okay, we did finally get to, to that. Brittany, have you heard any rumors about Princess Catherine not attending the Trooping Color in June? So this is an interesting story. And a little bit, the whole thing's a little bit odd. So Catherine was put on the schedule to review the troops the week before the Trooping the Color on June 8th. But then apparently, as it turns out, they did not discuss this with Buckingham or Kensington Palace. And so she was put on as doing this. And I bought two tickets for it. <laughs> one on one side of the stadium, one on the other side, because I wasn't sure which would be the best viewing platform. And then it came out that she might not attend and they didn't officially review that. And so they took her off. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's just lovely. Uh, so anyways, I don't really have totally an issue with that because I think I can, um, I, I may or may not go. I don't think I'll go to Trooping this year just because it is, with, I, I've been in that crush and it, it is, it's, you know, not terrible, but it's not necessarily super fun either. I prefer having press credentials when I can because then that gives me a bit more freedom. It gives me a bit more opportunities than simply being part of the crowd. So 
I, and I, I did the coronation last year, so I'm not looking forward to it this year. So anyways, it won't be quite as bad as the coronation, but anyways, but I was actually hoping to get Catherine's review of it. Cause that way it's just her and it would just be really cool. But of course now I don't know if that will happen. So we'll see. It is the day after the Duke of Westminster's wedding. And we know Catherine and the whole Royal family will be at the Duke of Westminster's wedding. So for pretty much all of them. Philippa, thank you so much for the tip. Meghan Markle is like me in exams. I don't know the answer to the question, so I'll answer it with the one I prepared earlier. <laughs> yes. And that is kind of how you do good PR, is you kind of answer the question they wish they had asked you, but she cannot really take the question well. Isaac Texas says, Brittany, will we have to hear the fake Procter & Gamble story forever? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. I don't know what she's getting at, but you almost get the feeling like she is desperate for people to see something in that story that we haven't seen yet or react to that story in a way that we haven't yet. Like she's desperate for something in regards to that story. Uh, Kimberly says, I can't believe Megan hasn't gotten the head yet. No designer has picked her up in five years of leading the royal family. No, no. Oh, Delta says, Brittany, you inspired me to travel to Amsterdam this April for King's Day. Oh, I'm so excited for you. I have wanted to attend that. Um, I don't think I will, but yeah, I've always wanted to do that. It seems like such a fun day. I love the Dutch Royals. I think they're so fun. And I, I was, I wish I could be there for the state visit between the Netherlands and Spain, but the tickets were just way too expensive. And the tickets to getting to Sweden and departing for Norway for the Scandinavian tours aren't bad. I mean, I have to leave a couple days earlier than I would like to. So I'd have to see, I may... If I do the the dates I think I do, I might actually have enough time to actually fly down to the Denmark to see them boarding the boat, go back up to maybe spend a day in Denmark, then go back up to Sweden. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, some words are cutting out, sadly cutting out again. Is it the mic? It might be. Hopefully not. I have to connect it via Bluetooth. Uh, I need to get a hardwire connection, but it's been... Challenging. Brittany, I've wondered why you actually buy images. I honestly do not think um, commentary channels do that, especially the cheaply one duns who covered royals. I, I mean, I debate that, but I do it just because if somebody comes back at a later time and goes, oh, you need to uh, purchase that image, and that image is in my video in terms of that little box I use, I can go, yes, I did technically purchase that picture. And I reuse a lot of my pictures. And so I understand that, and I like, I debate it. I debate it. I do debated quite a bit but i feel like too there's not a good answer for it either because this world is still so kind of nebulous and yes it technically falls under fair use but what if at some point it doesn't or what if at some point somebody comes back and goes no that's not the case so it's just hard and complicated like i just don't know so i just try to cover my bases and it gives me more opportunities especially you know i buy the purge well i need to finish one because the newsletter will be part of kind of the, the live stream podcasting I do is that the newsletters I pick, purchase the pictures I use there. Um, again, it's just, it's just an extra, it's, it's just an extra safety net really. It's just something. Yeah. Um, I do. So yeah, I debate it, but it's kind of a weird space. Okay, so let's keep going here. Jane Buxton Vanna says, I often wonder of Marcus's sexuality. Does he is he known to be gay? And that's why he and Megan are often all over each other, or does Harry not care? My understanding is he's gay, but I really don't know. I really don't know. So um Julian Lewis says, Pinkie Pie, do you think she owns an iron or only for her hair? <laughs> yeah, because definitely that's not her natural hair. Fantastic says, Brittany, you look so beautiful today. Why thank you. I thank you. Diva says, I can't believe she's trying to hire a P UK PR company. Yeah, because she needs to get on her um, hands and knees and beg for forgiveness. That's like the first thing she needs to do, which she cannot do. Karen says, hello, California visiting Arizona. Crazy storm last night, sunny today. Princess Sophie's voice is so pretty and beautiful speech to Edward. I, I need to actually listen to it. I haven't listened to it yet, but it is very sweet what she said. Katya says, good afternoon, Brittany from the Czech Republic, which I'm hopefully going to visit later this year around Christmas. I was happy to learn that you are planning a visit on our side of the globe. I'm looking forward to meeting you for a beer or a hot cocoa. Aw, I'm so excited. I'm, I've never been to the Czech Republic or Prague. And so I've heard it's very, very beautiful because it wasn't hit quite as hard in World War II. But I'm really excited to go to Dresden and Berlin because I had this like perfect plan of like my World War II 
trip, I'd go, I'd start in Warsaw. I don't know why I'd start in Warsaw, but I'd start in Warsaw, go down to Krakow, visit Auschwitz, and then go down to Prague for a break so I can see pretty things. And then go to Dresden, which was obviously hit very, very hard by the bombing campaigns. And then obviously Berlin as well, which was also hit hard by the bombing campaigns. So hopefully we will, we will be able to do at least part of that trip, at least part of that trip. Uh, Roder says, cheers to you for two years on RNN. You should sell RNN merch so your fans can support you. I do have a channel. I, I do have a chance. I, sorry, not a channel. I was looking at another comment. I do have, um, some merchandise, but it, I need to get some of them on, but it's, it's hard cause I pack everything and do it all myself. So it's just a little bit hard and I get my own merchandise rather than doing what other people, some other people do on social media, just because I think I get better products. So Mia Maja, why don't you rename this channel to blink? Cause I like this one <laughs> and it works. It works really well. It's easy to remember. I kind of came up with it cause it was like cable news network, CNN. I was like, Royal news network, RNN. And again, the, even though I talk a lot about Harry and Meghan and I do because they are, I think a huge part of how we look at Royals right now in the future. Cause they're really straddling this line between celebrity and royalty in a, in a bad way that impacts the future of the monarchies and stuff. But this channel was always about more than them and will always be about more than them. Even if they go away, well, uh, there's a million other things I wish I could talk about that if I had the time. <laughs> And so there'll be always, always things and that we will discuss. Uh, Brittany, I'm not sure if anyone else is noticing, but you're talking very, every few words coming out. And what's happening last weekend too, just offering feedback. Love to listen. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know. And I'm not seeing any other comment on it. So if somebody else has it, K the Samantel says it can't stand direct criticism, but it doesn't bother me when people say mean things to me online. Yeah. You're able to, um, yeah, direct criticism is always worse, especially from people who know you and has spent time with you and then they're nasty. That's so much worse. P Pacific says, I'm sure Megan also has <laughs> lost the strong comments after her many assorted problem moves over and went for interview. Oh yeah, I'm sure she watches clicks them all the time. All the time. Martha says she said she women shouldn't criticize other women on social media. That's wrong. So that ends Sussex Squad for good, right? Again, with that soap story is is that her body of work? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's stuff. Um, it's, it's just so interesting to see that she, she recognizes fault and what people say to her, what's directed to her, but nothing that anybody else experiences. So Shaz says she got that reporter fired after the cut interview because the lady put in about the size, et cetera, Megan was making. But she put that in there. She's like, well, listen to me making these guttural sounds. And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, you offered that. Like, why are you saying that? Um, Nana says bullying always includes a power imbalance in some areas. Otherwise, it's just being mean. That, that is true. And Meghan Markle used and abused her power as a royal against her staff members, allegedly. Uh, CNC Cribs says Meghan Markle is not worried about in-person bullying. She's worried about online bullying. LOL. She's ridiculous. Oh, uh, <laughs> Lorna says Brittany reads everyone's questions. You should leave one for her too. Yeah. I try to get to everyone. I try to call out everyone. I don't get to everyone. And that's just kind of, kind of the thing, but uh, that's why these Live streams are very different than the one we'll do in the future because the one we'll do in the future is more almost like a news broadcast. So there'll be a, an opportunity for people who either leave uh, comments or super chats or questions or something to be heard towards the end of the program. But most of the program will be more of a almost a news style thing. So it, it's just this is. I like this popcorn. People like to be heard and seen, and I don't have any issue with that. So Rebecca says, "Is it really?" The most important issue the world faces. Is this really the most important issue the world faces? Uh, if you're asking about Megan, probably not. But that is where we live. And this is a royal channel, guys. So this is what we talk about. Lisa says, have you noticed she's never had any guts to say a blind word against Princess Royal? Yeah, she's definitely had. Well, who would want to? <laughs> I think Princess Anne is one that puts the fear into most people. Because uh, she is. She's a strong voice. Nana says, as much as I respect William and Catherine, he does need to up his work hours. No reason he can't be full-time now unless she has some critical illness, illness, in my opinion. I agree. I think he, 
it's it's so hard because I, I get all sides of it. Yes, obviously, he's probably working behind the scenes more than we know because he did sort of facilitate this deal with the the disposable um, like meal operation. So it's like their meal, their, their boxes where you can put meals in or something. They're made out of seaweed, so they're really biodegradable. It's great. It's great. But at the same time, you need to be seen to be believed. And he's not really there to facilitate totally deals like this, which he should. But the bread and butter of royal engagements, and there was a whole report about this, is that them doing those small engagements and meeting with like small people, I don't want to shouldn't say small, but meeting with average people like all the time and like what you would consider more the bread and butter engagements that the and the Princess Royal does, those are actually the most important things. Like these big projects, yes, they're they're also important, but they shouldn't come at the expense of the little things that you can do. Because the little things engaging with people is actually the more important thing. So I think sometimes. William and Catherine have lofty goals and I admire that, but at the same time, they also need to recognize that their role that they have a lot often times, it means, you know, maybe it's not as glamorous as flashy as, or as impactful sometimes as they think it is when in fact, sometimes probably those little interactions might end up being more powerful at the end of the day than they think they are. And so I think, yeah, William and Catherine should, especially William, should be able to up. You should be working a couple of days a week, like publicly every week. I don't think there's really an excuse for that. Uh, and so at this point, especially with his father being ill, Camilla being out, like it just seems like. And I know he always cites family, but family, too, sometimes needs to understand, too, that sometimes you have to make sacrifices for other things, too. Like military people can't say, well, I don't want to do X because. A family they they can't really do that they're still required to go so i know some people don't like it when people say things like that but i think it's still true uh Sha says those kids are in the line of succession called prince and princess so that the kids in the limelight they and people need to see them to believe them yes sean jules says i shall leave now and trouble you no longer Brittany. bye bye i did share that picture and you can also look it up too uh, Kids Relevant said 2,000 watching. Let's keep it up. Likes. I'm visit Brittany's live, please. Yes. Someone in another chat said they were more concerned about what women see instead of what they need. Yes. And again, it's that whole report. It's about very superficial things when you think about it. At the end of the day, do you really need to see a mom on television with her roots showing to feel like she she feels you? Because it shouldn't isn't motherhood about more than your roots or a messy house isn't it more about nurturing discipline managing family and how you manage these dynamics aren't those the more important things in motherhood to show than your roots and if you're fat i would think so amy Ad uh, amaya says no amount of pr will ever fix the damage megan has done to her own image and credibility good luck megan rebuilding your brand lol hello from germany guten tag hello i was uh, I like, uh, like, uh, World War II history is one of my big areas. And I was thinking I could figure out more German than I could. I was completely lost when it came to German in Germany. And I felt really, really <laughs> inadequate. <laughs> I was like, I could figure out French, but not German. And I was like, oh. Um, Liz E says, I had a coworker who knows who Diana was, but didn't realize Harry was living in the U.S. and no idea who Megan is. That cracked me up. That is funny. That is funny. AP says, thank you for the gifted membership. Yes, thank you who gifted those. those are, that is so awesome. Kim McDonald, good morning from Nova Scotia, Canada. Hello. Eyes of Texas says, we watch TV to be entertained. Who wants to see a messy appearance or a messy home? Yes, 100%. Like actually seeing maybe something clean and something aspirational on television may encourage you to clean your house. <laughs> like, come on. Again, I feel like these people are so insulated that they don't realize that because we should not look to television for examples of anything, really. They should be something where it maybe sparks an idea, but it's not something where we should base our lives on what we see on television. Television is fake. Uh, a show I like, and I don't, I don't know. I didn't think I said this in the video I was thinking of. I was thinking of video. Anyways, show I like is Supernatural, which stars two guys. Both of whom are pretty tall. One's like 6'3", 6'4". The other one's like 6'1", or something. And they, they hunt supernatural creatures. Well, I'm not a guy. 
I'm not tall <laughs> and I don't hunt supernatural creatures, but I still like the show. Why? Because it was a good show with compelling characters. I didn't need to see myself on screen to enjoy the show. And again, Harry and Megan or Megan and some people in Hollywood are just totally disconnected from what people actually want, which is I want to be entertained. I want to have fun. I want to be distracted. I want to get out of my world and into another. I don't need to see my life repeated to me on screen. I live it. <laughs> that is my thought process. Anyways, you'll see the full of that in the video. That one will probably go up tomorrow. I'll probably do the South by Southwest one today and get that one up. I think I can do it with this camera and, and set up and everything and actually get it done rather quickly. Fingers crossed. Amanda says, what do you think Harry will list as his occupation and his taxes? Prince of the realm is not a job in the U.S. No, he will probably say producer, father, husband, dog wrangler, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> uh, house patcher upper something. We have Kathy. Good morning from Florida, everyone. And we have Teresa as well. Good morning from Ontario. And Cindy, one of our members. Good morning, all. Uh, James Kelly says, hi, Brittany. 2.30 a.m. here in Australia. Love the chat. I'm so glad you guys get up there. <laughs> that makes me feel so special. And I feel so bad because it's so early. Kenton says, you have a, a you have to take a trip to Ireland. They had the beautiful castles and country homes built during the time Ireland was part of the empire. Yes. Yeah, so I've, I've looked at trips in Ireland because that's been another destination. But I, again, I always want my trips to reference royalty in some way. So even when we're in Germany and the Czech Republic, it's like, if there's anything royal, like Green Vault in Dresden, we are going to the, we're going to figure out a way to go to the Green Vault. Like the, like the the guide person there. I mean, you will have to pay extra because it's not covered technically in the costs. But anybody who wants to, we will go to the Green Vault. And so, if, like, that's what I tried to do. Ever when we were in Munich, we went and saw the tiaras and the jewelry in the museum in the Rijksmuseum. No, yeah, it was the Rijksmuseum. I think it was. I think, yeah. No, the Residence Museum, not the Rijks. Rijks is the wrong word. Anyways, so. That is, that is cool. So anyways, yeah, I, 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 so I want to go to Ireland, but the Trova trip, the company I work with, that was all to say the company I work with Trova trip. When I've looked at the Irish itineraries, I didn't see anything that screamed as many castles as I wanted to visit. So I always try to do it that Jean Buck's fan says, my mother asked me if the Oscars are tomorrow. I used to follow them so closely. Now I don't know that Megan would love to present at the show. Yeah, I think they are this weekend. I honestly stopped following the Oscars. Like I used to watch the Oscars every year. Oscars were my are were my Super Bowl. Don't care. Don't know what any of the movies are. Don't care. Don't even go to the theaters anymore. So again, the only one I'm excited to see if wins is Oppenheimer. I think Oppenheimer should win. I think Killian Murphy should win for best actor. I wish Emily Blunt had a better shot at winning best actress. I thought or best supporting actress. I thought she did a great job. Uh that would that is my only thing because that was good. Um, Babbitt says, I think she's pushing Duchess of Sussex. So because so many people are pushing for Catherine Princess of Wales instead of Kate Middleton. To a certain extent, yes. But again, I think that she would be just so much better served if she just went by Meghan Markle. Joanna Yo said, good morning from Indonesia. Thank you for your great content. Why, you are so welcome. I'm so glad you enjoy it. <laughs> uh, Veronica says, San Fran was fine around 2014. Now, not now. Good choice in not going. Yeah, I, I mean, I debated it, but like there's, yeah, you got to be careful with your car. You got to be super careful with your car. Um, and I walked all over the city, actually. And one day I walked in like these flat sandals I got from Target that had no support. And I walked all the way down from the wharf from my hotel in like the Tokyo or like the new, it was like the Japanese district or whatever. It was a dumb idea. It was like 14 blocks there and back. But I was cheap and I, I didn't have any money. So I was like, well, I'm going to walk. <laughs> better shoes i really wanted to go to in and out burger what can i say sheila said the monarchy downgraded itself by andrew and harry taking themselves out um yes and no i don't think the the harry leaving was something they could not have anticipated but charles should have reacted better to augmenting the loss denise says do you worry Anne is getting worn out with some all she does for the summer monarchy yes and no i think she i mean obviously she probably gets a little tired but i think she also loves it so i don't think she minds Uh, SEJ says, actually, she likes to say my husband and her fake setups where she is, thinks she's being a global leader bullshit panel in, um, in Austin. So, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's just kind of crazy. Uh, but, oops. 
No. Becky says it's pouring here in Pennsylvania too, Brittany. We had little to no winter this year. Drove through a horrendous storm coming back from St. Louis, Missouri on Tuesday. Yes. Oh my gosh. I am. Yeah. I, I just, I don't want a rough summer yet, guys. I don't want a rough summer. It was rough last summer. And poor Miss Pippa, she would fuss, fuss, fuss at me because she goes on her daily walk. And I go, you know, it's six, seven o'clock at night. And I was like, honey, we can't go yet. It's too hot. It's too hot. You can't go yet. I need to get her those little puppy paws pads things for the hot cement and stuff. But Pippa is all that and a bag of chips. She is. And she's still sleeping. She's still sleeping on the. She's getting groomed later this week. Okay. Let's keep going. <laughs> oh, yeah, I did see this. Joe Mix says there are reports that Ms. Mrs. Markle hired the Salas who worked for Adele based on what she wore Friday. I don't think the Salas has started yet or the Mrs. isn't listening. I don't think Megan listens. I think that's the big problem. Megan doesn't listen. I did think it was better than something she's worn in terms of like the skirt and the shirt not being quite as bad, but still it wasn't great. Feed Miss Pippa raw chicken, meats, and organs. She'll lose weight and be much healthier. Yes, she... Yeah, she. we, we need to... Last week, but a sweetheart. Butter bugs baked good since good morning from Asheville. Just baking away and listening to my favorite Saturday morning live stream. Aw. Uh DJ Dalton says Megan's hip hypocritical criticism about women putting down other women made me feel sick and hateful towards her. I'm not a hateful person, but M has put down the Queen, Catherine, UK people, and her own female staff. She was worse to her female staff. That's the thing is what Megan's saying and criticizing others for is exactly what she does. It's just sort of so sad. Wilma Cat Wildcat Wilma says, of course she didn't call Kath call Catherine. I don't believe she believe anything she claims to have contacted Catherine. No. Uh Ritz says I would have loved if other panelists would have asked her to elaborate on any of the nonsense that came out of her. Yeah. Well, again, I really wish somebody would have challenged her. It's like, well, what is that? What about what's happening with your sister-in-law? think you'd get a little probably a little bit of a nasty reaction very contained but also a little all right dreaming girl oh i love that because i'm a big dreamer too princess diana would have been appalled and disowned harry for herself as she was alive harry and his wife are helping no one who needs them the tribes people in africa yes and diana would not have liked megan diana would have hated megan i think uh, partly because some of the, I think they have some of their worst tendencies in common. So they would have been like oil and water. They would have been, they would not have gotten along. Well, I don't think Megan would have gotten an in if Diana was still around for sure. Cause part of what Megan does is try to be a mother to Harry. So yeah. Carol Wilmingham says I was flown by his majesty, the King on KLM. Oh, I heard someone say that he was the King, but he greeted us as any other pilot would too cool. Oh, that's so cool. I just, I would love that. That would just tickle me pink. That would just tickle me pink. If that happened, I would just be like, Oh my gosh, the King is flying me. <laughs> the King is flying me. That'd be so awesome. Paul Donnan says Harry and Megan say nothing about cyberbullying carried out by the Sus squad. No, they don't. They don't. Uh, Fire Elements says Megan Markle loves it when she, when her initiated misinformation is popular, but is working to dismiss when other truths are discussed. Yes. So she loves misinformation if it benefits her, hates it if it doesn't, or hates actual information, I should say. <laughs> Carrie Norris says Megan Markle was pregnant with Lily during the Oprah Winfrey interview. Did she think that the criticism she received afterwards was bullying? Probably. Probably. Again, any criticism Megan Markle blankets it all as bullying. And some of it, yes, is bullying. I would I would agree it is true. But a lot of the criticism is warranted. <laughs> is warranted. So not participating, just observing. Says, love your lives. Thank you. And I kind of love, I kind of love how you said that. Cheryl says, I love the tiara. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, G Anderson says, I can't stand how she refers to him as my husband. That's what you do when you're speaking with someone who doesn't know your husband. If they know him, you use his name. It's so disrespectful. Yeah. Because again, she, I think Meghan Markle's issue sometimes comes to the fact that she is de so dependent on him some ways and she sort of hates that. And so she has to demean him to lift herself up. Uh, G L Hunter says, good morning, Brittany. What does Megan do? Is it norms to dress up and pop up daily? I guess. I don't know. I don't know what she does. I've asked that too. What do you do? Like you need to do something like not just wax on 
beautifully about X, Y, and Z. Like, you need to do something. Dreaming Girl says, why is no one raising hell about Harry's guards um, abusing and raping the tribeswomen at African parks? How can this not be one important topic when bullying is mentioned? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Rebecca J says, welcome, sugars. May you learn truth. Yes. <laughs> Megan Markle's criticism about the way women are portrayed in television is weak. It is. It is. And it's incredibly shallow. And not to mention the fact that men oftentimes too, especially dads, are usually portrayed as a bumbling fool. So, and the moms are the ones keeping everything together, which is, you know, you could argue is a reflection of real life. But honestly, if you look at some of the older shows, perhaps they're a little bit contrived, but I would prefer like Home Improvement, Golden Girls. I liked Reba, which was a little bit outlandish, but it was very funny. Like just thinking about like family shows. I used to watch, you know, Full House when I was a kid, Family Matters. Um, what else are shows? I have watched Mary Tyler Moore show. I didn't care for that one as much as the Golden Girls. I enjoyed the Golden Girls a lot. <laughs> that one's funny. If you've never watched it, uh, the first season's a little rough, I think, because the network did not have trust or or belief that four older women could 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 run i don't shouldn't say run could lead a television show like that and then they were proved wrong because they had to bring in all these young guest stars like every other episode and i was like why is everybody in the world missing them but then we got to the real and it got good sugar cookie says the problem with the sugars is that no one can have an opinion about personality or clothing choices without death threats among other things yeah because i i think i said in one point um the picture of Meghan Markle in that Dior button up shirt, which looked horrendous. And I was like, she looks ridiculous. No, I think I said she looks horrendous, all caps and how ridiculous it looked. And somebody's like, well, you're spreading toxicity. It's like, no, I'm not. It's a bad outfit. <laughs> it's called a bad outfit for a reason. Margie R says, good afternoon from London. Megan has never wanted to work. She paid an incredible amount for sunshine sex, to put her face in the news. She is talentless. Yes. hundred percent. Yes. That is the thing with Megan is that, she wants her PR to do all the work for her. And I think all her money from Suits went to Sunshine's Axe. I've said this in videos before. Tom Bauer kind of said this in his book and that she uses PR to augment what she doesn't want to do or what she can't do. And at some point, that just is going to run out. You cannot do that forever. Countess Spencer on her Instagram showed family jewels that she photographed. She's archiving. Then she says she's sending them back to the Bangs Fall. I wonder how, how uh, what I was... Oh, how wonderful she can do that. Oh, yes. That'd be so awesome. Countess Spencer. Oh, I haven't looked at that. I should look at that. That's amazing. I would be so worried, though, showing people all the stuff that I have. Oh, and it's Princess um, Adrian's birthday um, uh, from Sweden. So she lives in Florida. It will be interesting to see because I, I would think it's just so different for not to look again. Uh, it'll, it's so different, I think, for like Princess Madeline's kids moving from Florida where it's sunny, where it's warm to Sweden, where it's probably overcast a lot and cold. And especially in the winter, it's very dark for long periods of time. How they'll adjust. Because I had to adjust because I went from a sunny place to a very overcast place. And that was not a fun adjustment. But her kids are still pretty young, so that shouldn't be too bad. Megan S. says, Megan publicly abused her elderly dying woman but she needs, she sees all wants and sympathies for is herself. Yes. Yes. A hundred times. Yes. Kids relevant says Megan Markle is getting a bit long in the tooth. She does not have many years to be this fabuloso. Yes. And the thing is too, as the older you get, and this is true in the entertainment industry, the better actor you need to be. Because at some point you use, you lose the youth you had. And so what you need to have instead is skills to back up. And Megan doesn't have that. She doesn't, she's not a particularly good actress. So, so yeah, it's, it's going to be, <laughs> uh, I, Esther said, good morning. I love the setup. What flavor hot cocoa? I personally like TM in Texas and Harry and Megan need a lot of work to be likable. So I'm just actually have regular hot cocoa today. I do have the coconut hot cocoa, which I need to do again, but I kind of want to save it. I need to order more of that, but it's been hard because it's been warm. And I'm like, I ordered all this new hot chocolate and it's warm. And so I don't really want to drink it. Quite as much. Um, good morning from Southern California, sunny Southern California. I don't support the Prince of Canada and his mom. I mean, his wife. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I love your outro. It's perfect for your content. Why? Thank you. 
Yes. And it, this, it, well, it's mostly when I say, uh, thank you so much for watching by or something like that. But yeah, the outro, the music was perfect. I wanted something that had a bit of a Royal feel to it. And I felt like I did find it. So I was very pleased with that. Ooh, goodness. Sorry, me. Interesting. Does anyone else call Meghan Markle for inappropriate touching others like her hugs or touching arms and backs when meeting folks? No, but it is, it is, it is weird. I don't, again, I personally would not like it. Um, cause I'm not much of a hugger. Uh, Rich says I did not, I did love Katie Kirk's suit though. So pretty and love the color. Yeah. I, from what I could see. So it was actually playing in the background while I was driving home. And so I couldn't see totally, but she was wearing a pink number and it looked, didn't look too bad. Wildcat Wilman says archetypes number Sussex squad has been binge watching. They much, they must be, and it must be being paid to be promoted too. Cause as well, it, it's not in the top 200, like, um, episodes charts because i would think when it comes to episodes and i should look to you real quick here because i would think episodes matters more and then how many reviews does it have it has only 245 reviews i feel like if i launch my podcast we should we should test this out guys <laughs> when i launch my podcast because hopefully 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 we can do this next week and i will put it out on the podcast platforms and i'll i'll Again, it'll be an incremental doing more and more to kind of get the whole flow going well before like fully, fully launching it probably in April. Uh, see if I can get more reviews. <laughs> that would be funny. That'd be really funny because like 245 reviews. There's a good chunk that are five star. Of course, her fans. I gave her a one star. <laughs> a look at the as far as I can tell, it's pretty much only five star or one star. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, or somebody gave one star. But some of them too sounded just way too scripted for me. Like the first couple of reviews I saw. It sounded too scripted to me. Uh, Kate Simbal, I agree with someone's some of Meghan Markle's broad political beliefs, but I think she is a poser and is fake. How dare she hold others accountable, but not herself? Yes. And I think too, yes, she has... And sometimes I think when I look at some of the things she says, I know it's because we have different political perspectives, which is fine. But I think at the same time, too, is that she what I don't always like is people who don't recognize that they are coming from a particular political perspective or a political angle and then acting like that should be what everybody believes in and how crazy you are if you don't believe X. Um, obviously, we have differences of opinion, but I think there's more nuanced ways to do it than what Megan does. So we have Lizzie B. Thank you so much for the tip this morning. At the panel, her logic was, I'm a woman. You're a woman. You should be on my side. So I can't disagree with you because of my gender. Ms. Brittany, isn't that sexist? Why, yes. Yes, it is. It is 100% sexist because I think that just because you're, I'm a woman and she's a woman doesn't mean we have to agree on anything. Anything. Um, and I think that's incredibly sexist to believe because she's a woman, she should not be criticized by other women and criticism. I mean like the genuine criticism about her behavior and actions as a Royal, which were not in accordance with what Royals normally do that, that somehow is, should not be viable because she's a woman. It's just ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. And honestly too, I've always thought, and that I do feel somewhat sorry for Archie. Cause I think Meghan Markle probably enjoys a little bit more because Megan and probably puts more attention to Lilibet because I think she enjoys having the girl more than the boy in some ways because she's a bit of a feminist and she wants her boy to kind of acquiesce to her because Harry must acquiesce to her. So I do feel sorry for Archie because I think she was more excited about having a girl than a boy. But I don't know that for sure. That's just my thought. Uh, Ton Ben says, I'm a current opinion that Archwell is getting funded by, from these woke programs that our current administration is spending billions of money on taxpayers to promote grifters. Yes, that's entirely possible. And again, it's not super surprising. I think, too, that the Archwell Foundation is basically funded entirely by Harry and Meghan as basically, a, oh, excuse me, a tax write off. The money that they make, they can kind of funnel into there and then take the tax right off and promote their things. But again, it's seeming increasingly common that everything's promoting Megan's stuff, Megan's ideals and stuff, not Harry's, not them jointly, but Megan. 
And so it's becoming increasingly like the Megan thing. And our government funds a lot of different things and a lot of it can be good and bad and whatever. But yeah, it is interesting. And Michelle H says, why do you think there's not one young woman on the panel to give their thoughts? Oh, that's interesting. I hadn't thought of that. I don't know. Because Megan wouldn't want the competition. Uh, what are is it eight six zero four? Did you see Sophie and Edwards a tour? They were so sweet. I didn't see the speech yet, but I read part of it, and it's just so sweet what she says to him that he's her best friend, which is just so sweet. Pix says, "Hi, Brittany. Can you please explain, for example, why John Lennon was allowed to live in the U.S. while having used drugs, and why that is a problem for Harry? No idea. And I've honestly never been on the track of Harry should be kicked out just for that. The question is whether or not he lied. That's a bigger question." And, and, and those kind of things. That's, that's a bigger question. And Trisha says, what kind of hot chocolate today? It is still wittered, but it is the regular hot cocoa. And it is being drunk though, from the mug of Austria. And we have little, we have little Bavarian outfits. Looks like crampons for climbing mountains, mountains, tea or coffee or something, a cake, music for the sound of music. So. <laughs> SEJ says Paul Dornham she literally bought up these YouTube channels and acted like the victim per usual yes as she did complain about YouTube channels probably mine would have been included in there but I don't really care because I'm going to do what I'm going to do and then she can do what she can do because that is the element of free speech uh, Maya Maja says I want to see Kate in a panel someday how do you think she would do do you think she would can handle the pressure of talking without notes and stumbling yeah she's done it before they did it with the rugby um, live stream. And I don't think this kind of particular panel is just to me, that's a superfluous sort of kind of nonsense in a way. Cause they're there solely to promote themselves and their, their agendas and stuff. But Catherine is there. She is the princess of Wales. So she's not there to necessarily promote herself, but to promote her organization and business interests. And she has been on a couple of things that spitball, but that's not always everybody's skill set is to do something like that. And just because it's not your skill set doesn't mean you're any better or worse than anybody else. Like most people can't do this and I don't fault them for that. Uh, I'm the type of person you can give me questions and I can go, 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 go. And that's not everybody's cup of tea. I think Catherine, personally, I think she's, she's always been very nervous. I think giving public speeches. And I think part of it comes from not that she's not confident, but that she's always so conscientious of making sure that she portrays her husband and his family and the institution they represent well, that she doesn't uh, make any waves in terms of making things more difficult for the family. Megan just simply didn't care about any of that. She doesn't care how she damages her husband's image, her image, the Oh, I mean, she cares about how she damages her image, but she thinks she's not. But anyways, about, about her, how her husband thinks about his thing. Um, Catherine is just, I think, very cognizant of representing something greater than herself. Meghan Markle only wants to represent herself. So she speaks freely because she does, she, all she cares about is how it benefits her. Catherine is aware of the legacy of a thousand years of monarchy behind her and wants to make sure that every word she speaks represents them well, represents their intentions and does not step a foot wrong. And I cannot fall her for that because I would be nervous too. I was more, I I'm always more nervous talking on behalf in many ways of somebody else rather than talking on behalf of myself. So, uh, we have sleepy Fox says, I enjoy everything you talk about. You always have a different angle than most other channels. You are so ladylike. I appreciate that too. Why? Thank you. Why? Thank you. I was actually thinking for, uh, cause my birthday's coming up. I might do like a special tiara video cause my, my birthday's on a Tuesday and I do it cause I do a tiara Tuesday. I might buy a, like a cool tiara thing I saw for myself, which wasn't cheap, which isn't cheap. I haven't purchased it yet, but I thought, Oh, that would be so fun. Missy Lulu says Megan is only able to read or memorize a speech. She'll never come close to what Bethany Frankel or Martha Stewart have accomplished. Yeah. I don't think she has a great business sense. We've seen this. A simple business sense, too, is just working really, really hard. You have to sacrifice a lot and work hard. Harry and Megan got their deal and then goes, oh, yeah, Megan's pregnant. So we're going to have to take six months off 
And I'm, I'd be like Netflix going, what now? You have a $14 million mansion. Surely you have a staff of people to do things that most normal people don't have the bandwidth to do or would struggle to do on their own. And you're telling me right now you need to take six months off. Are you out of your mind? Like, so if I got pregnant and I was on this channel, I would still work and I would probably get back to work pretty quickly afterwards. And I would hopefully have the bandwidth to hire people to help me in certain instances. So I don't have to do everything. And, you know, hopefully a husband too, to take care of parts of that stuff. But, we, you know, um, so that would be what we would, I would do. Cause I would make it work. Cause I was like, I'm not just taking six months off just because oh, I don't have to. Cause that to me just, strikes of entitlement because there was a woman who was a ceo of yahoo I remember she went to back to work like nine days after giving birth and i'm like bravo to you because you know you have to hustle megan markle doesn't want to hustle that much bobby says hi Brittany. do you think um, megan would divorce harry if the new picks get released no i don't think so she knew about that beforehand she would she would divorce him after his usefulness has ended and she can't really get anywhere with the titles anymore that would be that would be my thing. That would be my thought. <laughs> uh, this is a good question. Amy Hill, what totally playing devil devil's advocate right now? What if Meghan Markle isn't as bad as we've been led to think? What if she was really bullied by the RF? I absolutely love all things RF, but what if? Now, this is again an interesting, interesting, interesting conundrum. And it's a good thing to ask. Always a good thing to ask. Am I being too hard? And my mom does this to me sometimes. She's like, but Brittany, is that really the case? And I appreciate that because that's true. I think, though, is that when you look at the history of the monarchy, they are well aware of the difficulties surrounding it. That's why they gave Catherine such a careful, slow entrance into it. They want to avoid another Diana situation. They totally do. And yes, there are aspects of the royal family that can be somewhat snotty and or snooty, I guess I should say. That's a better, better way to say it. And but, you know, Diana was sort of a bit snotty to um, Sophie, who ended up being the Duchess of Edinburgh when they first met. She walked in with her Chanel suit and criticized um, Sophie's Marks and Spence suit, which was much cheaper. And so there can be definitely a sense of entitlement, a sense of, let's say, superiority. I think that would be hard to avoid. At the same time, though, from all we've seen in how they interact, they are family. Once you have made once you have made inroads into the family there is a lot of love there there's a lot of camaraderie there there is a, a definitely a family element to it so i think though that sometimes marrying into the royal family can be hard i have no doubt it is possible to integrate in but it takes time it won't happen right away just because you want to it'll happen over a period of time as you build relationships with people and again the monarchy never bullied her, and that's never really Meghan Markle's accusation against them. Her accusation is that, they, well, they didn't protect me well enough, is that they didn't do things I wanted them to do. You notice everything about what she wanted, what she thought was good, what she thought would make things better. Not what the institution with hundreds, almost a thousand years of history might have figured out over a period of a very long time actually works best when it comes to public relations. Yes, they should modernize in some ways, but they have a history of things that they built on. You come to certain conclusions and they go, no, that's not best. No, that won't work. And Megan just didn't want to live within that. And I understand where that might be somewhat challenging, but you just get the sense the more Megan talks is that their her whole spiel is that they just didn't think she was the greatest thing since sliced bread. And she thinks she's the greatest thing since sliced bread. And so the, there was going to be obviously this natural tension that would develop because the monarchy is like, we have to protect more than just what you want. It's not about you. And Meghan Markle wanted to make it all about Meghan Markle. And that's not how royalty works. That's not how royalty works. Becky says, when is your next visit to England to cover a royal engagement? Uh, I'm not sure what yet, to be quite honest. Uh, I went to U London four times last year. So I I'm a bit Londoned out. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I want to go back. But I, I think go if I could cover the Duke of Westminster's wedding and I could cover Catherine's visit to... Um, 
Catherine inspecting the troops. I don't think I would stay for trooping the color. That's kind of the big royal engagement every year. But honestly, guys, that is a long, long day. Now, if it was a, a possible that her Christmas concert fell before the Nobels, I would fly to London, observe the Christmas concert in that attendance. Then I would go to Sweden to do the Nobels. Then I would start on the Christmas market tour. So we shall see. We have Lone Brigitte Reesleeves. Oh, thank you so much for the Danish crone, I believe that is. Uh, Lone, please tell us more about your prospective podcast. Why, thank you. Yeah, so it'll be sort of a mix. Because what I found is I cannot get to all the royal news in a week. And I find editing, which is a critical part of creating a video, very tedious and time-consuming at times. And it's very, very hard. It gets very, very frustrating at moments. So what I would like to do and what I'm planning on doing, and hopefully we'll get maybe the first perspective slash intro next week with sort of a soft release, is having a program that's essentially maybe about an hour long and that covers royal news throughout the week. So we'll do some on the British royals and then some on the other families. So Spain, Denmark, Netherlands, Sweden, Norway, Belgium, um, Monaco, the other royals. And so we can cover all these stories. There'll be a little bit of commentary. So we'll go, maybe we'll mix up the program, but we'll have maybe something that you could call more commentary in the beginning and introducing some other royal news. And then we get to the rest of the royal news. And then at the end, there'd be an opportunity for, uh, as the live stream goes on, that questions that develop, we'll have a, some, hopefully I'll have a, somebody who can help me grab the series of questions to ask. And then we I'll answer those and then they'll be put on and uh, the, the live stream will be available after then I'll probably clip out little bits and put it on later for people more interested in learning about a particular topic. And then at the end of the day too, what we'll do is I'll take the audio from that, which is why I have the microphone and that'll be put on all podcast platforms. So there'll be a video on YouTube, but also in addition actual podcasts too. Now we'll try it live stream. If it goes better being recorded, I might end up doing that, but that is the plan. And hopefully as that moves on and there's more opportunities to invite people to be on the podcast too, because this popcorn session is a little, I think would be a little tough to have a guest on, but for the rest of the channel, uh, or for, to have more guests, a, a podcast or a more scheduled regimented thing would be better. And you can invite on guests for a big period of time. We can hear from other Royal commentators and reporters in other countries covering events. And so that is the general plan. It'll obviously take a bit uh, to try things out, adjust as necessary. There will probably be little bits here and there about Harry and Meghan, but this is I do so much commentary on them, but I really want a chance to cover other things I just don't get to in a week. So I hope that answers some of your questions. All right, C. Crook74 says, became a YouTube member. Why, thank you. Um, Crook74, all right. So let's go ahead and get down. I know I missed so many questions and we got to wrap up here. So we have Catherine that love the real Royals and the beautiful dresses and Tiara is my favorite part of the YouTube channels. Yes. So hopefully again, this podcast will get more of that. Rose K said, good morning, Brittany, anything new with the Danish King and Queen? So they will be leaving on, I think May 2nd to get to Sweden. And then they do have an upcoming engagement. I think I, I can't remember it off the top of my head though, but they've had a bit of a slower start. Then you would think, but I also think too, they were just kind of like slapped upside the head and they were like, I think they were told the reports indicate they were told three days before the announcement was officially made. So they were probably like, they, it was something they weren't anticipating. So I can understand why they're kind of like, I mean, a death too is similar in many ways, but it also too is kind of like, it, it's, there's a weirdness though too, because you do obviously have the queen who is still alive. So you, you kind of got to be, like careful can't go too fast too fast um so yeah i think that was that'll be that'll be interesting interesting to see for sure but i'm so excited for their this opportunity that we have to see them more and more uh ritz says the swedish grandchildren are so freaking adorable they are they are they really are they really are. Mary uh, Butterbean Queen says, Mary Tyler Moore was groundbreaking. I was too young to realize it at the time. Yeah, it was groundbreaking. And I think some of those things do help people see things in different ways. My 
my issue with Megan is her whole spiel is that unless I can see it on screen, I don't believe it. Somebody can do X. I've never been that way. I believe I can do anything. I believe anybody pretty much can do anything if they they put hard work and effort into it. Yeah, I can't be a Victoria's Secret model even if I was super skinny because I'm just simply not tall enough. But I can do most anything I want to. And so it just requires work and effort and so many things. So those I I don't like that notion of, well, I must see it on screen. If I must if I can't see myself on screen, I don't think that is achievable. That's like utterly narrow-minded view of the world. I believe I can do anything. And I believe most people can do anything they put their minds to. Uh, there is always, obviously, too, when you look at a channel like mine, if you if everybody wants to do their own YouTube channel, some people would have more naturally more success than others. You are not guaranteed outcome of success, but you are. we all have the ability to start a channel if we wanted to. So anyways... That is, that is our thing. So I will just go back. I wanted to, and see if anybody was, and we have any more here real quick, trying to get to the end of the stream. I always kind of like to get to the end of the stream here real quick. So. All right. Wildcat Wilma says, what I mean is and Meghan Markle's uh, PR strategy to provide false allegations as facts. None are true. Yes, I agree with that. <laughs> Christiana says, RNN, oh crap, is that the bank? Or uh, a notification for what? Oh, good. Oh, thank gosh, it's you. <laughs> yes, it's me. It's me. I know RNN it's, it's, could sound like, I guess, that, but yeah. So anyways, oh, we have hit the end. So we have sugar cookie and this is a great comment to end on. I think everyone have a great rest of your weekend. Yes. Oh, yes. I agree with that as well. Have a wonderful weekend, guys. And I will be working very soon on a reaction video to Meghan Markle's panel there because so much to discuss. We'll have to see if we can get through it because it's an hour long. I can only use 15 second clips generally. So we'll have to be we'll have to see how it goes. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend and I shall see you. Oh, so soon. All right. Bye.